the Earth's seasons are cyclical. Living out in the elements, animals have a more acute perception of temperature than humans. They breathe with the sky and the earth. They live their lives according to the rising and setting of the sun. Each one has its own way of enduring extremes, whether alone or in groups. They move forward together, playing out their own songs of ice and fire. Towering over central China, the Qinling Mountains form the 1,600 kilometer long geographical dividing line between the countries north and south. As a barrier to air currents, they do much to determine temperatures and climate on either side. A mysterious animal lives deep in the forests of the range. Many people have heard legends about them, but few have actually seen one. The golden snub-nosed monkey has golden hair, a bluish face and upturned nostrils. Its unique appearance is said to be the source of the famous character of Chinese legends, the Monkey King. Most golden snub-nosed monkeys live in family groups made up of five to ten members. Infants are born every spring and stay close to their mothers until adulthood. Life up to an age of three years is a carefree time. This little monkey did not hold on tightly enough, and now it has injured its arm. Aware of its plight, its mother approaches. She is used to such incidents. To comfort the infant, she holds it in her arms. February is the coldest time in the Qinling Mountains. The average daytime temperature is minus 10 degrees. The youngest monkeys are experiencing the cold of winter for the first time. In addition to severe cold, 
A lack of food is another challenge that monkeys must meet in order to survive. Huddling together is one way to conserve energy and keep warm. While others are sticking together, this little one has been separated from its mum. It can hold on during the day, but on its own, it won't survive the night. It must find its parent as soon as possible. The first adult it encounters is not its mother. Another family will not accept it. While other infants can return home, it has nowhere to go. Its mother, meanwhile, is also looking for her baby. Before night falls, mother and infant are finally reunited. The snow keeps falling, but the little monkey is no longer afraid. It has found the warm shelter of its mother's embrace. Snow and ice are easier to endure when you're surrounded by a loving family. In early winter, a cold front has lowered temperatures on Mount Skuniang to minus two degrees Celsius. Attracted by golden berries on its branches, a large, colorful group of gourmets arrive.
the grandulas migrate vertically, spending summers at altitudes of around 4,000 meters before wintering in lower valleys at around 3,000 meters, where they feast on sweet buckthorn berries, together with other fruits and insects. Locals call them berry birds because of this. The plumage of female grandalas is grey-brown, while that of males is a bright blue that shines in the sunlight. Grandalas like to congregate in large flocks. To avoid predators, they adopt a feeding strategy similar to guerrilla warfare, raiding in groups and constantly changing places. A large flock shelters among trees in a valley. Periodically, a smaller group flies away to feed for no longer than two minutes each time. When this happens, there's a clear division of labor. While the group is eating, a few birds stand on high branches to look out. High above, danger rises into view. A sentry makes warning calls and the flock disperses. These are Himalayan vultures. Although they're primarily opportunistic scavengers, they will also prey on small birds when they're hungry. The grandalas lie low, quietly waiting for the danger to pass. Finally, the danger has gone. Fat and sleek, and with bulging bellies, it's clear that their strategy works. Individually, they're weak, but by working together, they can counter powerful opponents and eat their fill of nutritious food. For many people, the return of swallows means that spring has arrived. With swallows now building nests of mud on its cliffs, spring has arrived on Mount Sukunyang. to adjust to the swings. During the warmer day, its petals open to absorb radiation. During the cold night, they close to preserve heat.
ephemeral. This is no less true. Down on the ground, two giant pandas push through the undergrowth. A bear that is unrelated to the raccoon-like red panda in spite of its name, this is a mother with her one-and-a-half-year-old cub. When a cub reaches the age of two, it will leave its mother and live its life alone. These are its last months of childhood. Given its size, it's hardly an infant now. In the eyes of its mother, however, it's just a 150 kilogram naughty kid. Tired of playing, it snacks on some bamboo. The mother goes away to look for some more. To avoid other beasts in the forest, the cub has to hide up a tree. In spite of its bulk and sluggish gait, it's an expert tree climber. Its sharp claws allow it to grip the trunk firmly and ascend to a height of a dozen meters. After stopping for a breather, it continues its climb. Higher up, the air is cooler. Safe up the tree, it can take a good nap. When it wakes up, its mother will have returned. The Altern region on the Qinghai Tibet Plateau is bordered by the Qinlian Mountains to the east and Kunlun Mountains to the south, with an average altitude of over 3,000 meters. Warm and humid air flowing up from the south is blocked by these mountains, resulting in a dry climate with little rain. The winter is long, lasting nine months every year. It's not until May that animals in the region are given some relief from its dominant, frigid climate. As the frozen ground thaws and turns green, the animals become more active. Wild yaks, wild asses and marmots are a frequent sight. New life is also emerging at this time.
These are three wolf pups born this year. During their first few weeks, they had neither sight nor hearing. Now that their senses are fully developed, they're curious about everything. The pups are growing rapidly. They can gain 1.5 kilos in a week. With their size, their appetite is also getting bigger. Their mother is hunting for food. To survive in this high altitude wilderness, it's a quest that never ends. The weather is changeable. A snowstorm suddenly arrives. A pair of bar-headed geese have just touched down. The mother wolf sees an opportunity. but she's too impatient. The mother joins a pack. Its members are all blood relatives. Hunting cooperatively, they share food and territory, covering a range of 100 kilometers or more. They can go for days without making a kill. Recently, they haven't had any luck. The mother has been away for over seven hours. Her pups are losing energy. All they can do is wait and hope their mother returns with food soon. The mother must be tenacious. She can't give up. For her kids, she must stay strong. Luckily, the wolves come across the carcass of a wild yak on the riverbank. It passed away during the winter. Frozen in the snow, its meat is still fresh. Although she herself is still hungry, the mother brings back yak meat for her pups. Like all mothers, she is devoted to her young. She travels far and wide in search of food for them so that they can grow safely in their warm lair. In the hope of a warmer, sunnier tomorrow for her offspring, She's willing to endure cold and hardship today.
Across the mountains of the Qinghai Tibet Plateau to the north, the greater Xing'an Range is the coldest place in China. Spring is late this year, but breeding will continue as usual. This is a pair of great grey owls. Now is the mating season. To save energy for hatching and raising her chicks, the female has stopped hunting. It's up to the male now to find food for the whole family. The female owl waits behind while the male is away. To please her and raise a strong family, he will do his utmost. Great grey owls live in cold forests. Like all owls, they have front-facing eyes for optimal stereoscopic vision. To see sideways, they have to turn their heads. The facial feathers of the great grey owl are like a satellite dish receiver, directing sound to its ears. In combination with its superior vision, sound is an important means for locating prey. This owl seems to have heard something. This is the sound of food. A great grey owl eats on average five mice a day. Just one meal isn't enough to support the couple for long. The male sets off again. The great grey owl has a wingspan of 1.5 meters. It can cut through the air almost silently. Not every dive can be successful. The waiting female needs more food. To satisfy her, the male must hunt constantly. Now the female is being eyed by another young male. She is hungry and keeps calling, but her partner hasn't returned yet. The interloper spots an opportunity and offers a gift. Mm -hmm. 
the female accepts it. Will she betray her mate? Instead, she drives the young male away. To get food, she's played him for a fool. After filling her stomach, the female perches on another branch to wait for her mate. When the bright moon has climbed high in the sky, the couple are together. Raising a family in the mountain wilderness takes a firm partnership between two birds. They work closely together and stay together. Otherwise, their chicks will be very unlikely to make it to adulthood. Half a month later, the snow and ice in Inner Mongolia begin to melt. Howling wind accompanies spring on the lake of Dalai Nuar. It is a lava-dammed lake formed by volcanic eruptions, covering an area of 238 square kilometers with no outflows. Minerals brought in by river water accumulate, making its water salty. The Amma Eid is native to the lake. In winter, they live deep in its waters but its alkalinity isn't suitable for hatching eggs. So in spring, as the lake's temperature rises to about four degrees, thousands of them emerge to swim upstream for spawning. The narrow river starts to boil with fish. With the river now overcrowded, ending up stranded becomes a fatal danger for the fish. For those that make it further, new challenges lie ahead. The riverbed rises. The fish must jump over obstacles on the steep slope. This is the second barrier. Repeated attempts may be met with the same result, but the fish will not give up. It finally makes it. The rest follow suit. As one of four major lakes in Inner Mongolia, the Lake of Dalai Nuur lies on an important migration route for birds in northern China. Thank you. 
The army of Amur Eid advancing up the river channel is a rich food source, attracting flocks of palace gulls. This is another challenge for the fish. If they can escape the gulls, the survivors continue towards final victory. Although, there's one final barrier. The last section of the route is made up of turbulent water or rapids. The fish must go through the waves to reach their spawning ground. Making it past a gamut of mortal threats, their advance is driven by a pure and primitive instruction hardwired into their genes. Reproduction at any cost. After more than 20 days of their dangerous migration, the survivors arrive in their freshwater spawning ground upstream to lay their eggs on water plants and rocks. The eggs will hatch in 7 to 11 days. The new generation will then follow the river back down to the lake to begin the cycle again. The largest Takin population in China lives in the alpine meadows of Sichuan Province's Tangqiahe National Nature Reserve at an altitude of 3,800 meters. Every summer, more than 1,300 Takins migrate here to escape the leeches of the jungles lower down. This is a family of four. The two young males were born this spring. Huge when fully grown. Takins are herbivores. Young takins have darkish hair, while the hair on adults is lighter. Adult males can weigh up to half a ton. Clearly, the two calves have a lot of growing to do. During autumn, as the leaves start to fall, the Tang Tiahe area in northwest Sichuan's Minshan Mountains experiences a sudden drop in temperature. Takins usually migrate during September and October, moving to the river valley below. The two brothers' summer vacation is over. Now it's time to begin their long journey. In general, the father leads the way. The mother walks behind, taking care of her young.
The slope is steep. The calves follow in their parents' hoof prints, trying to keep their balance. They're learning step by step how to traverse the mountains. Many challenges lie ahead. The Tang Tia Hua National Nature Reserve has more than a hundred rivers. To reach the luscious vegetation of their winter home, the Tarkins must cross rapids. Although the rainy season has passed, the river's current is still strong. Its water can be as deep as 10 meters. Adult Takins are crossing the river one by one. On the other side, others are already feeding on grass. The mother, however, is slowing down. She's waiting for her young. Facing rapids for the first time, the river is a daunting obstacle for the calves. The elder brother jumps in first. The younger one follows closely. For young Takins, growing up means crossing a river by themselves. After reaching adulthood, they will never lag behind again. All the creatures on Earth have together written a song of life on their journey of growth.
will face death fearlessly. We may survive all dangers. Individual lives gather together and burst out with infinite power. We may be as insignificant as ants, but we'll make the world remember our names. <laughs>